Hey folks, uh, this one is Rectangles Rhombuses. I've always called them rhombies for plural, but this book says rhombuses anyways and squares. Um, uh, it's module 15.7 for Integrated Math 2. And so don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathLog.com. And then at the top, click uh, Integrated Math 2. So here we go. Here's our question. So how can we use uh, uh, given conditions to show that a quadrilateral is a rectangle, a rhombus, or a square? Okay, so I'm passing out some handouts, and so they're on this uh, flip chart right here. And when you, um, uh, there was a mistake on there, and it took us a little while to figure it out. There's some coordinates that were off a little bit on the rectangles, weren't you? And it's changed on here, so don't worry about it. So anyway, so we're going to uh, go ahead and plot these points, okay, so uh, for the rhombus here. So and probably you guys know what a rhombus is already, but we're going to talk about the properties of it here in just a second. So to the left four, I'm sorry, to the left six, up four, okay? Uh, uh, this one just goes down four. This one's to the right ten, down four. And this one's to the right four, up four, okay? So uh, when we graph those, there we go. Connect them up right there. Okay, let's answer some questions here. So are both pairs of opposite sides parallel? How do you know? Okay, well, one way is that these guys are horizontal, so those are totally parallel right there. And then, and then this one here, we do the, the slope. If they have the same slope, remember, rise over run for slope. Or you can do slope formula also. But look, this goes down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And this one goes over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five, six, and just make sure that this is the same down 8 over 6. And so um, negative 8 sixths is the same as negative 4 thirds. So yes, they are parallel because they both have a slope of negative 4 thirds. What sides are congruent and how do you know? Okay, well we can just count this one right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You can do the same down here. That's 10. We can use distance formula right here. And so I did that right there. So uh, I know that these guys are 10 right here. And so using distance formula from A to B, we do X sub 2 minus X sub 1. doesn't matter which one is X1 and X2. And then Y2 minus Y1. And then it's because you're squaring them. So when we do that, we find out that we get uh, 10 for both of those. So all four sides are congruent because they have sides of 10. Okay. Are both pairs of angles congruent? Okay. So if we pull out a protractor, everybody's used a protractor before. So if we pull a protractor out, now this little crosshair right here, this little crosshair has to be right on the vertex of the angle. Okay, so I'm going to put that crosshair right there and just make sure that this line right here is going to line up with this one right here. Okay, and then we just look, where does this angle go through on this protractor? Okay, let's see if I can get it reasonably close right now. I'm going to save some time. So that's pretty good right there. I might have to go to the left just a little bit. I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to, it, I might go a little too far. Anyway, so uh, we start with a zero, which is the bottom number. So it's way over here. It looks like about a 126 right there. And then, um, and then let's see, well, actually, there's another thing, too. But let's see about this angle up here. If I rotate it around, i got to line that crosshair up on top. Okay, and then so when I do that, everybody's used these before, I think. Uh, and make sure that it's lined up on zero. And then the zero now is uh, on the bottom again. So, um, and it's off just a little bit right there, but it should be about 126 again right there, okay? Or what uh, one of my students suggested is, now that we know it's a parallelogram because both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, so it's a parallelogram, then we know that these opposite angles are congruent. So there's several ways to do that. So um, uh, anyways, um, I used a protractor to find out that's 54 and that's 54 and that's 126 and that's 126 right there. But another reason is also it's a parallelogram and both pairs of opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. That's, a, that's one of the ways to prove it's a parallelogram. And then once it's a parallelogram, then both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So you can just also say, yes, it's a parallelogram, and that, that tells us both pairs of opposite angles. Okay, so do the diagonals bisect each other, and how do you know? Okay, um, you can use distance formula if you want, or you can say, well, that's a parallelogram, and you know the diagonals end up bisecting each other. I think I used midpoint formula to remind my students what midpoint formula was, because if, it, if they go through the same midpoint, that's where it's bisected. And so... 
So you can see that they go through the same midpoint right there, and they're all bisecting each other uh, right at the midpoints of each segment right there. All right, are the diagonals congruent? Okay, well, this one's it just looking at it. Can't you see that this diagonal is shorter than this diagonal right here? So no, those diagonals are not congruent, okay? Um, so we could use distance formula to clarify that, but uh, it's clear that uh, BD is shorter. Okay, so are the angles made by the diagonals congruent? And what it's asking is, are these angles congruent? Okay, and I did pick up a protractor, and I wanted to see if it was half of, of 54, which, which is 27. And so um, they were about 27 each on those, and this was half of 126. So, so what happens, you guys, is if it's a rhombus where all four sides are congruent, that's what a rhombus is, a quadrilateral with all four sides congruent, these diagonals end up bisecting uh, these angles right here. Okay, now if it's a regular parallelogram, it doesn't bisect the angles. But if it does, if it is a rhombus, it does bisect the angles. Okay, all right. And one more thing we didn't uh, talk about here, but the diagonals on a rhombus are perpendicular. They make right angles right there, or right triangles. And then you have some p triples we'll discover later. Okay, so properties of a rhombus: it's a parallelogram, so all those same properties. Opposite sides are parallel. Opposite sides are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. The diagonals bisect each other. And then here, the consecutive angles are supplementary. So the next two angles are, are supplementary with each other. Remember, these guys were, this was 126 and this was 54. They're supplementary with each other, okay? All right, so that's one thing about a rhombus. The other thing is the, di the diagonals bisect the angles in the rhombus. So it cuts this angle into two equal angles. If it's a rhombus, then it bisects these angles, okay? Not if it's just a regular parallelogram, but if it's a rhombus, then it bisects the angles. And then the last thing is, is the diagonals are perpendicular. They make right angles, right triangles, Pythagorean theorem, p-triples, okay? All right, so here's a rectangle. So let's plot these points and... So to the left, 5, up 1, to the right, 3, down 5, to the right, 6, down 1, to the left, 2, up 5. So, okay, there we go, right there, okay? So when we connect them all up, it sure looks like a rectangle. You guys know what a rectangle is I'm from 4th grade and I think 5th and 6th also. So anyway, so are both pairs of opposite sides parallel? Well, since both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, then it's a, it's a parallelogram, so it's definitely... Um, uh, it's definitely, uh, uh, they're parallel, sorry, so yeah, sorry, brain freeze. Or you can do slope formula, you guys. This one goes up 1, 2, 3, 4, over 3. From here it goes up 4, over 3, so these lines are parallel because they have the same slope. This one goes down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and this one goes over 8, down 6, over 8, and so, so yeah, you can say that, um, uh, uh, that they're parallel because they have the same slopes, and, and check out these slopes, 4 thirds and negative 3 fourths. If they're opposite reciprocals of each other, then they're not just, they're, um, uh, they're, they're um, perpendicular, you guys. So, so perpendicular means that there's a right angle right there. So when they're opposite reciprocal slopes, then they're always perpendicular. So if both pairs of opposite sides congruent, how do you know? Well, we can use a ruler, we can use distance formula, um, and I used a distance formula to get the fives and the tens right there, okay? All right, what angles are congruent? How do you know? Well, they're all, four of them are congruent because they all make uh, right angles. They're perpendicular slopes, so they're, they're right angles, okay? So do both diagonals bisect each other? Yes, well, they sure do because it's a parallelogram and opposite uh, uh, parallelograms are morning. Um, uh, the diagonals bisect each other when it's a parallelogram right there. We can use distance formula also, you guys, um, to find out uh, uh, if they're bisected and find that midpoint right there and, and use distance formula anyways. Um, uh, so the diagonals are congruent to each other, okay? Are the diagonals congruent? Well, yeah, we found out this is the square root of 125, and this is the square root of 125, so they end up being congruent, okay? So on a rectangle, you guys, they're parallelograms, so all the five properties happen. Uh, the diagonals are congruent on a parallelogram, not on, not, not on a regular parallelogram. See how this diagonal is shorter than this one here? But if it's a rectangle, then the diagonals are congruent to each other, okay? So here, um, this diagonal here, uh, uh, BD right here was equal to AC right there, okay? So those two diagonals are congruent. 
and they have four right angles, okay? So that's the properties of rectangles, okay? The special features on rectangles are the diagonals are congruent. And then, and then I think your textbook says if it's a parallelogram and one of them's a right angle, then all four of them are right angles, okay? I think that. And, you know, it's easy enough to prove that that's a right angle. It's 90, and this is supplementary, so that's 90, and this is supplementary, so that's 90, and same, so for that one, okay? All right. So the square, you guys, so let's just draw a square. They're giving us free reign. So I, li I like drawing it in quadrant one. It's easier for me, and they're going by seven. So well, both pairs of opposite sides parallel. Well, yeah, their top and bottom are horizontals, left and right are verticals. And it's a, it's a parallelogram, so you know that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Okay, what, uh, what are the congruent sides? How do you know? Well, all sides have uh, length seven, so they're all congruent. And what are the congruent angles? Well, they're all congruent because they're all right angles. Okay, do the diagonals bisect each other? Yes, it's a it's a parallelogram, so the diagonals bisect each other. Are the diagonals congruent? Well, yes. Um, uh, we can it, since it's a, a rectangle, it has four right angles. The diagonals are congruent, and are the diagonals um, are the angles made by the diagonals congruent? Okay, so is it ask? It's asking are these angles being bisected? Yeah, they're both 45s is what happens. So we can use a protractor to check right there. But anyway, so the properties of a square they're parallelograms. Okay, and so uh, the diagonals are congruent, just like a rhombus. Okay, the di it has four right angles. Okay, and then they bisect uh, the angles. Okay, just like a rhombus, they bisect the angles. And then the last thing is um, that they're perpendicular. They make right angles right there. Okay, should have put a right angle right there. Alrighty, all right. If you guys are in our class, that would be your uh, homework assignment. It is a worksheet. My coffee's ready. Take care.